you guys and this is your boy scotty by nature tv we have jamar 84 we have jeremy speaks carlin tramiel as well as t and we are are the chasing panel what's going on y'all it's, it's cold as a sun bitch outside I it's, was gonna be it's hot it is hot yeah i'm show. in i'm That's in new york you, you, you up, up there you up in north Fort we down in the south where it's hot <laughs> I'm sick of it. <laughs> I'm, I'm really sorry to hear that, honey. I, I it gotta watch where I'm, I'm dead shit. <laughs> it is hot here. Well, we are doing wonderful, baby. How are you? How is everybody, first of all? I'm over it. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I'm good. I'm just... Tramiel, you want to talk about it? I was in a car accident and I lost a piece of my rearview mirror. Yeah, y'all. That's why he. That's why we will. That's why. So I have not really watched most of this episode. I only seen part because it started late and I was uh, on my way here. So I only seen like little bits and pieces of this. I was asleep because it started late. Well, we're going to get through this show, as we always do. We're going to get through this show, honey. Um, So while we're here, um, I know that we'll be doing promotions at the very end, but just know that Carl's song is out now. Um, the, I'm sure they'll be sharing the link to it. Through, my mods will be sharing the link to it throughout the show. And Tramiel's song is up for pre-order. I just gave my moderators the link to that, so they should be sharing it as well. But we'll be promoting more on that towards the end of the show. But the thing that's way more important is that Tramiel is okay. Yeah, your review mirror. I mean, not your review mirror. One of your mirrors is gone, honey, but you still here. Yeah, I'm still here. Here, 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 oh, I'm, 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 I'm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And not to mention, Carl and Tramiel are doing reviews on X Men. So if y'all like, yes, we just posted to, some videos too. So go get go right. Right. Oh my God. Let me head over there while I'm still tipsy. I'm about to gag my ass. <laughs> he was here talking about something he want to fuck Sinister. I Mr. Do. Sinister. He's See, so that's why I want to watch. He's so sick. <laughs> <sad. laughs> <laughs> That's why I want to watch. Gamble is my husband. Okay, before we start this show, hey Bando. Hey Bando. Hey Bando. Girl, just give her a whole segment, child. <laughs> but anyway, 
let's go ahead and get into the show because we already, you know, it's already late at night, honey. And, and uh, you know, Carl and them, uh, Carl, Tramiel, uh, J- well, everybody except for me is in Eastern time. So let me go ahead and get this started. So let's get it popping. So we're going to start this thing off with Kesey's video shoot. Okay. Any mm-hmm. thoughts about that video shoot, the song, and the pep talk that Devin and Kesey had? Seven five. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> um, I like the song. I like the video concept. Um, I like they got their chemistry together. It's really cute. It's nice watching them work together. That's all I have to say about that. But I love them. That is true. I think it was very accurate that they balanced each other out. Where mm-hmm. Kesey is more emotionally, you know, cognizant. And but he lacks sort of that assertiveness, whereas Seven is very uh I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but it's not very emotionally, you know, connected or sometimes so they can kind of teach each other how to, you know, deal with you know the parts that they lack. So I think that's a great dynamic to have in a relationship. I agree. Anybody else? It's seven five. That's all I got. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> go seven. Go KC. You won't have nothing to say about that, Jeremy? No. Nope. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, uh, it was love nice. Love. Yeah, it was nice. Okay. Good for them. See, y'all, see, let me tell you something. Y'all bitches up here, y'all just want to talk about the mess. That's it. That's yes. all. No, I mean, I'm that. But nobody else does anything. The song was cute. The visuals was cute. I live for the pep top or whatever the case may be. But for me, seven was fine. That's all I got from it. Because you were treat. That's fine. When I saw seven in his blight, I was for it. Hey, seven. <laughs> anyway. That's all I got from that scene. So we're going to get into Astro. Astro mama and grandmama. He ain't seen okay, his grandmama. shout out to the grandma. Put the grandma on cast. <laughs> Why you say that? Girl, the grandpa was reading her low key. Yeah, she had, she, she was. was reading it. Hey, don't ask her. I want to see. I want to see more from grandma. <laughs> <laughs> she should have been a cast member. Well, he said he ain't seen his grandma in years. His mother took accountability for the mistakes that she made in regards to raising him, in a sense. And he talked about most of his relationship has been, uh, have had DV involved. Any thoughts on that scene? That is unfortunate as fuck. It is. Yeah. It was cute. It was this a, cute. Is a testament to our community being somebody fresh. Yeah. yeah. Because I do know a lot of the times it's not taken seriously in the LGBTQ community with domestic violence. Because the outside looking in, they look at it as, well, it's a nigga whoop his ass. Yeah. And it's like, half of me is like, you right. He is a bitch ass nigga yeah, whoop his, his ass. ass. But then the, the other half of me is like, I get it. Cause it's like your lover and you don't necessarily want to take it there. So it, it's, it's like, I get it. And it's like, from the other side, I get it. But that's why it's not taken seriously, and it really should be. Because, I mean, you know. I, I, I You know, I, 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 I get it. But I ain't going to harp on it, because I've never been through that. So I can't speak on it. I have whooped that bitch ass today, okay? <laughs> Don't ever let no nigga punk you beat his ass today. You know, I, I agree with it. it. Finally, I do. Hit that bitch with a bottle, bitch, <laughs> or a hammer. Whatever, whatever comes first. I've used hammers. <laughs> Carl knocked his ex to the side to the what to the white meat with, with a hammer. hammer, bitch. Don't yeah. play with me, bitch. With a hammer. hammer. Sure did. We'll yeah, talk about he that later. It. He popped his head over like a <laughs> bag of biscuits. Damn. Don't play with me. Oh, you abusive. You damn Not right. that t-shirt was swallowing. What was it over? Some steaks. It was over steaks, bitch. Why were y'all fighting over steaks? The medium rare one yeah. was mine. Don't try to stake it now, but you said well done, but stick to your choice. <laughs> <laughs> that is sad. <laughs> yeah, a concussion over a steak. Sure did, bitch. I bet you will get I bet you get well done next time, bitch. <laughs> but the man still wants to be with Carl. Wait a minute. I'm a good, I'm a good Wait ass. Wait a minute. Bitch. I'm a good ass bitch. <laughs> 
The people in the comments is gagging Astro. They said Astro still dressed homeless. <laughs> Somebody said he looked like no. Nikki said he just like he was a uh, he was uh, like an auntie. He, and not he the didn't say that. Oh, why is y'all giving Astro much? That t-shirt was following Astro. I, mean, I ain't seen nothing. I think he dressed like he's twenty three. What is Carl and Tremel drinking? I have no idea. What are y'all? <laughs> That, that nightgown. I'm dead at y'all. That nightgown at your head. Oh, it's horrible. It's nah. insane. Y'all better leave that baby. That damn head. Ah, uh, y'all ain't like his nightgown. Y'all are mean. Nikki good because I scream at the TV every time. <laughs> I bet you if it was 2005, y'all would say nothing about it because y'all all wore those oversized ass t-shirts. You right. Skills. I you definitely right. did. I had the oversized uh, t-shirts. Let's I had, not I had add. The big ass but unfortunately for Astro, shit. it is 2024, girl. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> look. <laughs> you have to I just have set to your own trends. Own. You can't just follow the trends. Set your own. Do your own thing. Um, all right, moving on from this. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> They don't care. Listen, y'all. They yeah, don't care. Yeah, this this panel is going to be this, this show is going to be short tonight. I can already see because they're going to bypass all the positive stuff. They want to get to yeah, the right. negative. I want to talk about the mess. Like we're I talking about them babies next. Let me see. Them niggas having babies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's next. Yeah, I saw them. I saw that. That was very sweet. <laughs> so nice. I mean, it was really nice to see, you know, some grown queer men, you know, loving on their kids and stuff and fighting for their children because them straight ones don't be fighting for them kids at Come all sometimes. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they are good parents. I think we are. Punks yeah. with kids. It was cute, though. <laughs> I, I, I actually enjoyed the little conversation. I did. Because it, it, it gave an interesting perspective. All of them have similar situations when it comes to co-parenting and with who they are and so on and some such. So it, it, it actually is a good thing. At least if they they have somebody they can go to that understands where they're coming from as a gay guy with kids. So, I mean, you know, I, I can accept it. It was well, I'm trying to pretend like they're straight having babies with these straight women. Go find you a lesbian like everybody else do. Nah. So but, you know, they, they, they were talking about having two. very, very young. I think, like JC said, they had it like in senior year of high school. Y'all should have been. People used are time still time trying to like figure out if they like Dick or not in high school. Yeah, it's, that's true. It seems like it seems like um a lot. Of, didn't all of them have their kids in high school? I don't know how old is Marquis. No, no, not necessarily because I think. JC's are the oldest. Well, JC and I think uh, Roberts are the oldest. They probably yeah. had them around the same time. But I think uh, Marquis said his was only like six. Yeah, uh, Marquis, I mean. How old is Marquis? Mm -hmm. Late 20s, early 30s. Mm. Uh -huh. But I just, I'm thinking it's only, it's a lot just to have a child so young. But then it's like to have a child so young with a woman and being gay. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> it's like, what kind of what kind of relationship or dynamic do you and the baby mama have? Like, is she right? Like, what like I feel like it's different for everybody, but like, are you right. is she embarrassed? Is she, honestly, ooh. I would love I would love to see one of the baby mamas do a scene. Oh, really? they ain't doing it. Well, I would love it. I would love to see how they co-parent. I love to see how she feel. I love to see how, like, that that's would be interesting, interesting to me. I would love to see how they is. Like, you know, because, well, I mean, just because he does what he then he, he's not a good dad. Well, you know, I think Robert said that um, him and his baby mama are, you know, I think he said his baby mama looks at him sideways because of the um, the God. gay stuff. I thought he wasn't like the father, though. He thought he was the father, I think. He was made to believe he was the father him, until him. like a year or so ago, yeah. or very recently. But it's just like, I've already raised her years, so I'm gonna, I'm not gonna abandon her. But I thought it was like, I thought the baby was like, like one or two, like when he found no, out. No, she's in college. Damn. How old is Robert? Sorry. Robert's in his late 30s, I think. Well, oh, okay. okay, we're not gonna say that. We're just gonna say our age. I could have swore. I could have swore he said that the baby was like 
still young. I don't remember him. Mm-hmm. He said the day of the reunion that they filmed last year was the day that he dropped her off at college. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. I wonder what that dick do. Do you? So did that one mean she? Did, he was in high school. He had to have been about to graduate around that time. He yeah. said he was seventeen. Yeah. Can we know his jacket they had on tonight was cute. Oh, yeah, like the red, I like, hope you don't mean that short waisted crop top that and leather coat. shit he had. The confessional on. red. Then that that was cute. I was That's, there for that one. Yeah. Side note. Sorry. Next. Someone said. So so wait a minute. Let's make this clear because someone said he found out about the daughter two years ago, and the other and the other person says that no, he found out when she was eight. So which one was it? I don't I know. I thought he's that was like that's all we care about. At the, at this point, yeah, that's, that's, he's not his father. He ain't, he ain't the there was a significant amount of time he before he found father. out. There was yeah. many many there was many years before he realized that, that wasn't. But he decided to stay in life anyway. Hell That's yeah, it. you can raise that child for that money. And <laughs> That's it. Well, I guess, um, well, I didn't even know that JC had no kids until. Me neither. Two I didn't know that either. And Ooh. I should say, JC looks like a different bitch every single thing. I don't <laughs> pick him out until the confessional pop up. And I'll be like, oh, that's who that is? I never know. Who he he's completely different. He used different voices, different hair dye, different wigs. I don't know who he is thing until like three minutes in. I'll be last, and I won't even be drinking yet. <laughs> and JC got grown, rusty ass boys, eighteen to sixteen. God damn it! So how old is JC? He thirty seven. Eight. Maybe he look good. Baby yeah, he looked good. I don't think he looked very good in the in the scene. He looked sexy as hell. <laughs> okay. Okay. I date him. Well, we can How much that Jimmy you even had? No t shirt. I got gasoline. Unleaded. Now another thing in this scene that I was kind of taken aback by was that was that Marquise was actually mm-hmm. married. Now I knew. That he had a kid because he said so, but I didn't know he was married. Yeah, I didn't know he was married either. But you know what, though, I can see it. Me too. I'm I can see it. I'm not. Really Is he surprised. giving that newly I'm coming out gay vibe shit? Like I, 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 I get it. It's definitely not giving that. But go off. Yeah, it is. Then what is it giving? What's it give? It's giving that he's been gay for a while. I mean, he probably has, but he probably went through that phase of, oh, let me try to appear yeah. and normative for my right. safety and was, what's going to be accepted. And then mm-hmm. now he's like, girl, fuck y'all. I'm going to suck it. I mean, he had a, I mean, he had an OnlyFans. How, for how long, I wonder? I heard that, like, well, they said that the account was around for, like, four or five years. I didn't even know OnlyFans was out that long. Who's they? Um, one of the... <laughs> TTB. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> what, and, and was he doing stuff for people or was it solo? He was doing stuff. Go look at the video. <laughs> I ain't about to relay his content over here. I didn't know there was such content. <laughs> but like, yeah, he had broke it down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't know that. I mean, I do I want to go and see Marquise in there? I mean, I, I, I want to kind of see him, but I don't want to pay for it. Yeah, a storyline. Mm, I think period. So. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go out to Dallas. I'm gonna do a, a more mic video for 250, and Tremel will go on a date with him. Yeah, I want to go on a date with JC. Period. Child, please. I have better luck waiting to hit Twitter because I, I just found it on Twitter eventually. I'm sure. What's on Twitter? He got rid of the Twitter. Come here. I want to see the Twitter. What's on Twitter, bitch? Send it to the chat. <laughs> <laughs> they say he deactivated it. Ooh, well, Jeremy, how you get the tea? That's what that. That's what was on TTV. Damn, I didn't watch that. I have. I did not get received any notice of such content. Mm. My card. Yeah, but he like he he t- he showed it. It was called like Marlux One with like three X's or something. Oh, uh-uh. mm-hmm. oh, well, never mind. Shut up. 
Okay. All right. Okay. So moving we'll on. Move... Huh? Hey, moving on. Moving on. Um, Robert also said he was trying to stop smoking. I doubt y'all care about that. And Holy fuck. congratulations. Yeah, great. Congratulations. <laughs> Period wow. to her. Terrible. And I saw JC also was saying that he was having trouble seeing his kids at first. I think it was, I think his baby mama didn't want to. Baby mama drama. You, you so for dog. So for dog. No tea, no shade. I believe it. I believe every word of it, so for dog. I do. I believe every word of what you say. I believe it. I do. I believe every word of it. The chef a whole bottom. I think his wife may have been might have been a stud. <laughs> See, somebody know. Get you a stud, bitch. It's a contract. Y'all just have joint custody. Oh my goodness. I'm speaking from experience. No, I'm I'm in contracts. <laughs> So you now we get into out to be. The, now we get to the messy part because I feel like this episode yeah. pretty much opened up with a lot of positive family oriented moments. Oh, but and ended with the bad, bullshit. The very yes, now we get into the bullshit that everybody want to get into. Yes, finally, bitch. So Sean's having an event. I think it's Sean, Taylor, Marquise, um, Jet Whitfield, and Astro. I'm gonna call this lady Jet Whitfield because he's definitely Sheree Whitfield. He, that's exactly what he gives. I like the beat. Yeah, that's what he gives. No, I like. Um, Telly says that he's gonna support Sean. Jet confronted Astro about his comments at the party, and then after that, Robert then confronted Tedley about the about the lie that he told. Him. So, where y'all want to start? It. I will start. Okay. Because I have something to say. Okay, go ahead. Now, the I'm gonna start with the Jet and Astro thing. Now I get where I get where Jet's coming from. Like all the additional shade that's being thrown at him and all that good stuff. But what I'm looking at is that Astro, I hate the conversation with artists when it comes to who spits better and all this other shit. Because I'm just gonna be honest with y'all for a minute. The spitters aren't doing as well as the bitches that can pull an audience. Period. That's just what it is. Yeah. And as a, another artist to another artist, I'm going to tell y'all right now, you can have the best lyrics, metaphor, bar for bar for bar. If you can't pull an audience, then what are you doing? My thing is, when it comes to Jet, Jet has charted top 10 with his new album that just came out. Y'all go cop that. But Astro claims that he's a lyricist, which is cool. I don't think his bars is all of that. That's just my own personal opinion. But it's just the fact that it's like, why are you coming on somebody else's bars? When y'all know when it comes to this music stuff, we're all different in our, our bars. You got your your performers, you got your lyricists, you got your party music people, you got your pop people, you got your uh, rap, you know, rock. It's a lot of different genres when it comes to music. Yeah. So when it comes to that, you just have to be like, music is subjective. Like everybody has their points of things that they like. So to judge somebody be like, oh, because I feel like Astro, because I just this is my uh Raven Simone kicking in. I feel like bitches that like Astro want everybody to rap like Nicki Minaj, and the rest of us aren't doing that. So we're coming for our own authentic selves. And just because you are recycling Nicki bars and trying to emulate what she's doing, that has nothing to do with everybody else. The rest of us is trying to find our own voice, do our own thing. And just make the people move the way we want to. And the way I'm looking at the numbers, because I know that was mentioned in this thing, numbers matter. And as I'm looking at it, I ain't never seen Astro on the chart, but I have seen Jet. And that's all I'm saying. And I'm not being funny. Facts are facts. And this is just what it is. Love the hood princess down. But <laughs> Jet has found a way to get his audience, keep his audience, and they are buying his music and supporting it. They're not doing that for you. Now, one thing I have to say about the bars, you can have bars, but if it's not a ple appeasing, then it, what are you doing? Because like you can have the bars all day, but if the music don't sound good, it just don't. And if ain't nobody paying for it, then what we doing? Mm. So at the end of the day, the girl is booked, she's busy, she's charting. At the end of the day, out of the bitches that's on the cast, Jet is probably the number one goddamn MC on there, and that's just no shade. She is. And that's what I got to say about that. Anybody else? So, so um, get, get, get all that for Carl real quick. Mm -hmm. 
So what he was trying to say was, bitch, you say you're doing, you, you're trying to come from my art, but I'm doing better than you. So what are we really talking about? What are we talking about? <laughs> but at the end of the day, the most successful bitch I've seen off that cast has been Seven and Jay. And that's just all, like, I watch, I get all music platforms, all the shit. The ones that I see constantly is what Jet is and Seven. Somebody said, somebody said something like, that's um, it. if I'm doing better than, if I'm, if you say that you're better than me, but I am, I'm actually doing better than you, are you really better than me? <laughs> what, what's happening? And this is no shade. We are both artists here. We know how this goes. And my clear winner tonight would have been Jet. Astro should have kept that comment to himself. But I like Astro. And what the thing, and what I've noticed, and this is another thing I'm gonna say: shade, maybe shade, maybe no shade. The ones that don't chart or don't sell music are always the ones talking about Steph Guevara. Always, it's always them. I didn't say that. it's always them. It's I, always the ones I that nobody's that. listening to. That's always talking about step your bars up, and I understand. And I'm like, I hear them saying it. I'm looking like Jed is doing fucking workout videos. She's doing top tier 4K videos, charting, selling. Like, what have you been doing besides doing goddamn motherfucking videos in a fucking cubicle? Like, I mean, just like I'm just being honest. We're all watching the same show here, are we not? I'm just saying. You can say so, what you want to say it's about Jet. A, B, C, no. one, two, three. <laughs> He's got, one, two, three is his position on the chart, not yours. Just saying. So I think you might want to slow down when you come up for Miss Jet Jackson. No. <laughs> Jet Jackson. <laughs> Jet Jeff. Rest in peace, Jet Jackson. So the, the, I'm way, just saying. I, the way I interpreted that whole interaction that 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 beef is I thought it was like apples and oranges okay because I feel like Astro has a particular taste and like a style of music that appeals to him and Jet Jeff's style of music does not appeal to him. He probably looks at it like this poppy right like, that's what mainstream <laughs> approach where that's more marketable. <laughs> that works for Jim. And I feel like Astro works is, is more appealing to like the down, the gutter, you know, more hip hop themes. So he's like, you don't sound like me. You don't sound like what I like. So I think you should be better. Oh, when it's man. like, well, and Jet does not do that. Like Jet me, does I not make do that. Music. That's not his style. If you don't so like, like you're not going to get that okay, from sorry. Jet. But don't you're mean my music is trash. That means you just don't like Gucci music. And that's fine. First. And foremost, I have got to speak up for Lee Thompson Young. We is not going to do the famous Jet Jackson like that, okay? Because he was, <laughs> he was not shaped like a, he was not shaped, all right? Like a, like like a, like a loaf of brioche bread, okay? He was that not. Was a, he was that, not that was my husband. Like that. Okay, man, too, bitch. That's Ooh. why we not gonna do him like that. Okay, we, we gotta call him something else. It was Matt, the answer, bitch. Let me live. <laughs> we gotta call him something else. That Jack Jackson. The shit. Now, the, only, Jack, the, the, only thing that I would give, that one. <laughs> the only thing I would give Astro. Well, at least one thing is like, Daddy, you it, better not clip this tomorrow. I bet I still. He probably will. He probably will. Oh lord. Because I do remember that song that. Astro, Jet Jeff, and Kesey did last year, and Jet said, I gave you the top song. For me personally, the highlight of that song was Kesey. Kesey, really, Kesey rap. But see, I didn't Kesey really remember y'all's part. To be a lyricist Not like that. and entertain. A lot of bitches don't have that. <laughs> to me, Kesey was the star of that song. Personally. <laughs> I heard, so, I well, boy, I'm I'm so saying, like, it was not you. You were not the sole reason as to why that song was the highest chart because it very much could have been people enjoying Kesey's parts because it was a three-parter. So it's kind of like, Jen, I understand your point. I understand your point of view, but it was just like that point right there did not hold a lot of weight oh, to, no. to me because for me, it was Kesey that was the highlight of that song. He was. He, did, he had the best verse on there. He did. Right. But Astro raps like he's trying to make it out of the shell. To Miss, I was reading that. Why would you read that? I was just reading that comment. <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> you know exactly what it meant. It's the rap. It's the struggle rap. But that maybe that's just his style. No, it's like, like his, you know, the sound. 
I think uh, Astro uh, is seeing J. Joe as a Latin boy and thinking not a little cool. Latin boy dressed in drag. I mean, it could but be true. That could be an underlying is, issue. That could be a very that much underlying is, issue that we revisit with Seven and Jet Jeff in the future. And that's what I was just about to say. Is it that the same thing that Jeff that uh, Seven feel about? Because it, it alluded to that later on down in the season. Yeah. Stay tuned. <laughs> well, we'll get to that later. We all saw that in the trailer, but we will get to that when that happens. But as of right now. Yeah, Jet is the clear winner, and I feel like um, Seven is in in, in running with him because those are the only two bitches I see on mainstream shit. I'm just saying. So if you're not Jet or Seven, when we talk about music, y'all two sh- and nobody else should be talking. Man, Kesey can squeak a little bit. Squeak, Quincy is had the potential. Whatever her name is, Quincy is new. Kesey, yeah, Kesey, he knew. So we're not giving him, we're not giving Kesey too much right now. But as of you know, streams, I have taken an assessment. Right now, the clear runners are Seven and Jet. Everybody else, when it comes to this music, keep it on mute and keep it cute, bitch. Well, there's only just Astro left. And that's just it. Oh, and Barbie Bank Rose. If it ain't, if it ain't Jet and Jet and Seven, <laughs> that's it. Well, it's not. It's coming. No, it's sorry. interesting. The comment is interesting, but it says, "My problem is that a lot of Black LGBTQ community doesn't support our own people. They support straight artists and build them up and make them famous." Well, that's exactly that's my point too. And as a me as an LGBTQ artist, I only make music for us. I want. I'm talking about sucking dick all summer, and it's only for us. I don't give a fuck about nobody else. If the gays love it, that's where I'm at. I don't give a fuck about nobody else. I will party, you know I will perform at bar mitzvahs, back club parties, as long as the gays are there and saying, yeah, bitch, or they say, yeah, glow. As long as y'all saying that, I'm good. I will say this. I really didn't know LGBTQ music at all, pretty much, until I started really being on YouTube. And I first started seeing Chasing Atlanta, like the first season. Because that was the first time I really heard of like um, Lil Kendra and I liked her music and then and, and stuff like that. So it, it's, it's like, I, I understand where Carl is coming from with that. It took me that to really like give it a chance and a shot. And I like it. It's, it's a lot of different LGBTQ artist now that I listen to and that I like and that I put a rotation. You know what I mean? So I mean, you know, I I, I support it. It's good music. Mm-hmm. We out here. Astro is the better lyricist, but Jet makes better commercial music. What's up? What he said. And I'm, which is Pretty true. Much. I've never taken that from because lyrically, Astro is the better uh, is the better rapper. But like commercially selling is Jet. And, com- and this is 2024. Had this been 1999, Astro would have had a point. In 2024, yeah. he does not. I don't know. I don't feel like Astro can rap, but maybe that's just me. I mean, I'm, I'm not even saying that is a whole different conversation. I mean, I don't think he's that great. I don't think he's that great of a lyricist either, though. Uh, like, I, I, like, I, feel, I, feel, I feel like we're just saying that because he's black and because he said. No, that. I, I think Astro no, no, is good. He's not bad. I feel like he is. I I haven't really heard any of his music that I thought was good. It was all cringe to me. But really, um, music is different. Like it's a really it's a really good black LGBT rapper that I love. His name is Cakes Tequila. Oh, I love Cakes. Yeah, like so when I'm thinking so so when I'm thinking about like bars, like if you're being if you're talking about like gay people, like I look at that as like really having a lot of bars. Like his music is really good. And then when you listen to like Astro, it's like, mm, this is not, I don't want to, I don't never want to hear this again. But the thing is, I get what you're saying, but if we're talking about between Astro and Jet Jeff, then. I don't know. I feel like, I don't, I don't think like. I don't Jet, think Jet. Jet to have like horrible bars. Exactly. I'm saying, I, I, feel, I, feel, like, I feel like, I feel like we're, I feel like that's just being said because Astro is saying it. I feel like last season when he showcased his music, we were all saying that he can really spit. I remember us having that conversation because we saw him. I, think he, I remember us all saying how, you know, good, you know, his music and how good of a rapper he was last season when he was like video recording his music video. But mm-hmm. 
I'm saying I feel like now because Astro is saying that that's being like said over, but it's not true. And I feel like it's like jealousy. Well, I for one ain't saying that JJF music is not good. I'm I, I'm speaking for me. I'm not saying that, but I do feel like I've always now I've always said that Astro could rap, and I've always felt like in the grand scheme of things, when it comes down to the actual like rhymes and stuff like that, I felt like Astro was better at that, but Jet made the better music. Some people can be better rappers, but other people can just make better music sometimes. I or know. or just more marketable to a wider audience type of music. That's what I would make think. it better, but I yeah. can, I can when use you're doing this in more different, different marketing. A lot of different factors. And it's a certain audience that you're trying to reach. You got to make sure that whatever audience you're trying to reach, your music reflects that. I feel like Jet has understood the assignment. Astro has not. And that's mm -hmm. no shade. He just hasn't done that yet. Mm -hmm. I feel like he, I'm not feeling like I'm not saying he's not lyrical because I, I like his bars. But I, as an artist, I just decipher the bars. But I feel like listening as a if I take a step back from the artistry, his music isn't marketable. It's just like he's spitting that shit, but bitch, don't ain't nobody listening to it. Mm -hmm. I get that. That's how I feel. Mm -hmm. Jeff takes a little different spin on it. Jeff, Jeff does a thing where it's marketable. So I can see that playing in the club. I can see it on the commercial. I can see it blend, but he knows how to, he's understood the assignment. Astro has not. So mm -hmm. when I, when it comes to it, Astro be quiet. This, this ain't your lane, sweetheart. And it's, it's and it's kind of like this, and I'm not trying to compare Jet nor Astro to either one of these artists, but it's kind of it like, but it's kind of like Nicki Minaj, for instance. We all know that she's mainstream, but there's some people that feels like an artist like Rhapsody is lyrically better than Nicki Minaj. She is. Or, uh, That's artist, not a feeling. She Rhapsody is definitely you know, better. Or an artist like Tierra Wack. I, I know all about that. She's definitely better. Yeah, but Nicki is more marketable and she's a more popular bitch. Nicki, when Nicki first came out, she made everybody know. Now, I'm not the biggest Nicki fan, but I got to give credit when it's due. When Nicki came out, she told everybody the blueprint of what Nicki said she was doing, she's doing it. She said what she was doing, and she's doing it. All I can say is shout out to that bitch. She said what she was doing. She she understood the assignment from the beginning. Nicki's bad. Rap thing I feel is harder, but Nicki said, bitch, I can be hard, but show y'all bitches how this is done. And Nicki did that. And I have to get it. It just all goes back to how music is subjective. It yeah. just, it, that's really what it goes back to. Very true. You know. But Nikki did her shit. I had to give her that. Yeah, but I'm not going to subject myself to Astro's music. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> all right, next is Tedley and Jeff. You better be the moderator. Okay. No, it was Tedley and Robert. Oh, what well, somebody shit? I don't fucking know. I'm drunk. Robert, Robert, there you go. That's why you said the Casper hat on. You hear him tell me. <laughs> Any thoughts about Robert confronting Tedley about you know the lie? Um, Robert's what? jacket was cute, <laughs> and um, I don't know. I don't. I, what I come to find out is that Te Robert is trying to be a really good friend. Telly doing a lot of lying for what it's saying because Telly don't do a good job at defending himself. So I don't know what's happening. I don't know. I feel like that that good friend word is thrown around real easy. You know, like I don't, I don't know. Like I don't know necessarily if Telly is lying or if it's just like if he said that he didn't have or if he did not have. I I don't know. I just don't feel like Telly would just take him to a location that he's really that has no. Like no access. Remember to like I said that last episode though. I feel like he's doing this on for real, or like on purpose. Because there's I no way. Like, I, I feel like I feel like the real lie is us believing that Robert will be able to afford anything to buy. <laughs> to own. Like I'm saying, like why are we playing? Like if anybody's lying. Is him like I'm just saying, like, I don't know. I'm not I don't really know how good of a friend, you know. It is to blast you in front of a room full of bitches who don't really like you like that. That's cr I was really shocked to see Tedley there, you know, at that, you know, at that Muslim oil shop. So, <laughs> Jeremy, I'm, 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 I'm really, I'm just, but like, I'm just saying, like, 
I just feel when it comes to Ted, like to call him your brother, though, like that's crazy because like when people were saying it, like him and like Robert was close at George's party, like he denied it. So, so I'm saying like, I don't know. I feel like Robert has a way of, of dominating conversations with people who are verbally weaker than him. I just don't, I don't. I don't know because I feel like if you felt like Telly was lying, why didn't you say that when y'all were at, when you brought up the conversation when he had took you to that location? Like you made it seem like okay, I can understand that, but when we got to like the group setting, like is up to like no, you a motherfucking liar. Oh, you fake. I don't know. My friends don't be calling me a liar and fake in, in a room full of bitches. And if they put it in your face at the moment. And it's like, and I'm saying, and I'm saying, like, I don't, I don't know how real Robert is either. So I don't know. I just, I, I, I have pity for Ted Lee. He is. Yeah, I low, I, I low feel like Ted Lee may be a little on the spectrum. I don't think so. I think Telly doing this on purpose. Now nah, he got the dropsy. I, I think Telly doing this on purpose. I don't they know. got the dropsy. Nobody I feel like I feel, not doing this I feel like I feel like people. I feel like I feel like Tedley is not really comprehending what's in front of him. Is either that I feel or like he? he is. I feel like he's doing this to get Shut up, let him talk. views for himself. That's how I feel. Let him talk. No, fuck that. I don't know. Like me personally. I just would never be at a bitch's, like, you know, fragrance. You know, I don't even know if that's what you want to call it. Like, who literally just tried to expose me multiple times in groups of, groups of more in the den. Like, you know, that, like, that's, like, that's wild. Like, I'm just trying to understand, like, the only person on this show who I really feel like has the energy that I would have if I was approached with the energy that they're giving certain people is seven. <laughs> did, did, I, did you do know that? Like, I like, see. like seven, like seven is like he, like he would be me if I was responding to conflict. It's like no, he knows how to shut it down immediately. It's, it's I don't know, but pray for Tedley, y'all. Okay, so why do you have um, sim not sympathy, pity for Tedley? Because I really I like I don't know if I if he if he really feels like these people are his friend or if he really feels like these people are his brothers and he thinks that this is all a part of like friendship. Cause like I'm saying, like real friends would not do this to you. Like even when he was at the the dad, like, you know, meetup, the 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 home homosexual father, you know, support group or whatever, that <laughs> I'm a special father. Not support. Like it was like it was like he he was dragging he was dragging like he was dragging Tedley there too. You know what I'm saying like what type of like friends do that shit? Like I just I don't know. I I just would not be calling none of these bitches my my brother. Like that like that's a stretch. Well, I guess so I don't need to be. Before, they nothing but coworkers, but these bitches like to say friends all the time, and I'd be so confused. I guess oh, I don't need to call Carl my friend then because the way he dragged me in public. Girl, fuck you, bitch. You Casper looking bitch. Casper. <laughs> <laughs> All white. <laughs> <man. laughs> I love Scotty, y'all. She goes go, like, go like, screenshot this tomorrow. I love like, them for and Jamari is too, bitch. What the fuck did I do? Yeah, now you in it, bitch. I ain't do nothing. She slept too. Y'all know what I know. But like, yeah. No, you don't know. They don't know what I know, bitch. Yeah, and I know what you know, so I know the truth. Like, like. I was so, I was so, I like what confirmed how I felt about Seven is like when you just, when we were in backstage, you showed that live and he was reacting to what he saw. I was like, thank God. Because if another one of you bitches get on, like, get in the comment section, like, chatting, like, I love you, friend, and bitches are dragging you on the show. Like, I could never. Y'all hoes look dumb. That's like, that's dumb. Well. Well, that is a situation where, you know, they shot this show months ago and they probably didn't got over it by now, maybe. I don't know. That's the only way that I can see them being all up in the comments saying I love you, friend, and shit, if they didn't got past it by now. But I don't know. They still doing it, though. Like, they're going active on, like, online, on live, and on TTV Live. 
you know, on the interviews, still dragging the shit out of Tedley. And I'm just like, why are you in these people lives like commenting hearts and they're like in and they're literally <laughs> like what's going on here? Like, am I missing it? Like, I was like, it has, it has to, it has to be, it, it's either the spectrum or he's dumb or it's something. I, I really don't know. But honestly, you will never catch me like, like dapping up bitches who don't like me. You know, oh, like, definitely. I wouldn't either. Absolutely not. I'm good for paying, good for making a bitch be dead in my head. So, you know. You know, Jamar knows what my favorite quote is, and that is, they're dead to me. I don't know them. They're dead to me. No, that's the uh, Aquarius shit. <laughs> bitch, they don't like your ass. You have died. You have died, bitch. You are in the green pastures of my brain. Okay, period. So we're going to move on to the next scene, honey. And the next scene is this. The party bus. <laughs> Dear Lord God, our mighty Jesus Christ. <laughs> what, T? When I looked at that bus and I saw it was a cheese bus, I hollered. What do you mean a cheese bus? What it's you mean what I mean with cheese bus? Like what we rode to the in, in high school, cheese buses, the yellow buses. Oh yeah, the cheap. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting that. And that's for damn sure. The party, the cheese buses make a good party bus, but that just adds what I was saying about my previous statement. It's just like you can't talk about step your bars up, and that's the performance that we get on the bus. I'm just saying. <laughs> and the song sucked. That's what I said. The song wasn't good. Now that song it's was like not you good. just went us whole. I mean, the last song that we heard wasn't good either. Talk about. Well, I don't the even bars, remember the last song. Up. I'm just talking about the song. And then exactly. this was That's the performance the that followed. I'm crazy. I, I'm, I'm confused. Yeah, like Astro. Y'all thought that, that bus was cool. That that's uh, well. If, Let's if, tell if, if, their money. We if love Ghetto bus, Five they Projetic buses is what y'all into. They're fine. I'm for it. I guess. <laughs> Y'all cool with it? Cool. Yeah. Don't invite me, bitch. <laughs> Don't invite me, because I'm going to judge the hell out of you, girl. Uh-uh. I'm doing a cheese bus. T, you coming? I damn sure ain't bitch. You better come, Brad. You better come. <laughs> we rapping songs on ours, too. What's up? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, if it's you, I do it. Hey, yeah. Your shit will be a lot more litter than what that you was. You already that's know, bitch. I'm a lit bitch. You already know that's happening. Child. I can't. It's a mess. Scotty, shut up, Cat. The bus looks fun. That's a damn lie. I ain't even say nothing. <laughs> Be, <laughs> they said the bar had glow sticks with decorations. <laughs> <laughs> no say that. It's like a yellow bus. Bus. It's, 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 I, I, I'm, I'm just gagging, Astro. It's no shade. Lord Jesus. That bus had the same amount of people on it that was at Tilly's book release. And Astro you said, You know what? Who is going to envy? He is being very shady. He's one of like he's one of my my subscribers. Hey, he's funny. So he learned from you. That's what it is for. They're following you. That's the problem. Ah, mm -hmm. uh -uh, you rag bitch. The outfit was bad. The lyrics sucked. The skin was greasy. The bus was a flop. His half bed broke and his breast. Oh my God. Yeah, That's like, why is he so shiny though? Y'all give an Astro a lot. What did he do? I mean, I don't really, I don't really feel like I'm giving him a lot. I feel like I'm very tame right now. You kind of are. Yeah, you are giving tame. You are yeah, like, I'm, like I'm, well, not necessarily you. It's the people in the comments. They is not I mean, like Astro he was, breathe. He was, he was giving a lot in this, like in this episode. So I guess, I guess that they're like just returning the energy, right? I will say so because y'all is not like y'all been wrapping your hands around Astro since we stopped. <laughs> but why is he so shiny in those confessionals, though? <laughs> It's you know how good. your mama used to put petroleum jelly on your face in the morning before you went to sleep? Yes, I hate oh, yeah. that sticky shit. Looking like a damn like, damn. like maybe, <laughs> maybe it's Vaseline. <laughs> I'm weak. I'm crying. Looking like you've been baking chicken all morning. 
Oh my god. No, 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 but that no, is no, no, that is nobody does that no more. Nobody. We use actual skincare. We don't just Vaseline. We can pick a corner. Pick a corner and, and sit your ass in it and I don't like come that. out for the rest of the line. Oh my goodness. Astro does look like he'll still change out of your purse though. But he does. I it's wouldn't true. trust I wouldn't trust my wallet around him. I mean, he does give a homeless tease. Like, are we not going to, like, be honest about it? We all know that. I, Jamar, don't look at me like you motherfucking confused. There's this I am bewildered. You know damn, you know damn well, well, you know damn well that no, man was homeless. To make him see and, I, like, and, 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 that's, and that's the reason why he's really mad at Jet Jeff. I change my mind. I don't know. I don't know nothing about that part particularly, but you know what? In the name of love, <laughs> let them know, Jamar. Let them know, bitch. Right. <laughs> just, <it's> just, <laughs> Uh, and I'm like, like I just wouldn't, and, and it's like I wouldn't be as critical of Astro if he just was not talking so much shit. Like it's crazy. Like I just feel like if I was like on the come up and I was in a needy situation, I would have a little bit more humility about myself and try to expend that energy out to get it back. But it feels like he has some type of what do you call it? What do you call it? Resentment towards people who are doing better than him. Because, like, maybe he thought last year after he came on to the show that he would have a better music career, but it's not really folding out that way, sir. Mm. But, you know, prayers for him. <laughs> Shouts out to him. Moving on. Why did I holler at this? <laughs> okay. What's the next after this? Let me go to my nose. Okay, so after that, we get into the Jet and Marquis scene. Now, this is the part that's, that's, that really kicks up the mess. They start talking about, you know, the rapping thing. Marquis, um, Jet asks if Marquis and Astro kiss. Mm, girl. Um, then, you know, they start talking about <laughs> our Barbie wanted to date Marquis. And then Marquis talked about his past marriage. And then Kesey and Seven was a part of the conversation. Now, who want to start with that? Who, they who brought mix. up the Kesey and Seven thing? Was it? I couldn't remember. Was it? It Marquise was definitely. It was definitely Marquis. How did he bring it up? I couldn't. He I was like, he, he was. He had brought it up um, by insinuating that um, mm -hmm. that Jet Jeff was saying that. Um, Kesey and Seven had a situation as Kesey didn't have nothing going on with his career, so he needed Seven to help him, you know, get up off the ground. That's what that's what Mark Keys said. That's not what Je Jeff said, and he and he basically, you know, projected that on him because that's what he truthfully feels. But Je Jeff is not necessarily smart. That's what that's what you get for being shady, but not having intelligence. You can't really. Understand when people are trying to set you up in a conversation. I agree with Jeremy tonight because I because when I tuned when I was kind of like catching on to what they were saying is I tuned back in when Jeff Jeff was like oh I feel like you know uh, Kesey's doing this that's banished by seven he's doing that that's banished by seven but at the same time it's kind of like is it bad like is 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 Kesey utilizing seven's resources because that's the person he's dating a bad thing like i mean i don't really feel like he was i don't really feel like he was saying it as it's a bad thing he was just saying that like oh is that your manager that's what he had said to him Clearly. but i'm saying but like something, but that, that's what that's what his reasoning is for saying it but he wasn't making it seem like it was a bad thing it was marquise dragging the shit out of kesey and then saying and then like trying to put that in Jet Jeff's mouth. What he was he was saying was fucked up shit about PC and is asking was that what Jet Jeff really meant? Like I didn't know how he put those together. Like he I was like he called the man the manager. How did you get that his career wasn't shit and he needed seven to lift his career? I was like, where did that come from? I need to watch that again because I was like, wait a minute, I'm some parts of this I was missing, maybe because of the key, but I was just like. 
where, how did we, there was a lot of minutes in the uh, parts of this episode where I just said, wait a minute, did I miss something? How did we get from here to here? Because it went from zero to 100. It's like, um, I think Mark, I don't know. I don't like, it was giving very weirdo energy. I don't know why Marquis like started that. It's almost like he wanted to to cause issues between Jet Jeff and uh, Seven and and Kesey. Oh. Like, I, I, I didn't, I didn't really understand the the point in that. Or did Marquise really hear that from somebody else? Marquise, where did you get that from? And it caused you to bring it up here on camera. Did you get that from somebody else? Did you get that from? Tedley, if you ain't doing no interviews, don't come up in here trying to put no little questions. Like Ted, like Tedley, please. Tedley. <laughs> come up here and ask me like, please, ask please, please, please bring stop Tedley talking. up. Let's please stop talking to, like, <laughs> like Tedley. Please stop defending people that don't consider you their friend. Like it's not like you defending Marquise and it's not giving that. Like the nigga messy. Tedley got to understand these bitches as coworkers, not friends. Exactly. He, he got to understand that. I told you, I think Tedley's doing this on purpose. I swear. He likes it. It's he funny. got to be doing this on purpose. But um, Tedley thinks this is funny. He got to. I mean, There's I don't no like. Way. I really, I really don't know how damaging, like damaging my professional reputation. Like is it's funny? Like they really got you out here looking crazy, sis. Like it's 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 All getting promotions, good promotions. There's no such thing as damaged reputation. Mm, like you're like you're talking about like it's different it's between it's, it's different. Goes. It's different when we're talking about music versus corporate America. Your reputation is very important. Like you, who gonna who now from this? Who raise your hand if you gonna raise your hand if y'all gonna raise your raise your hand? I guarantee he'll get booked. Raise, raise, raise your hand. Raise your hand if y'all would, based on what we see on this show this season and what's being said, if y'all would go to Ted Lee to buy a house. Buying homes and, and marketing and stuff like that. Rats and roaches. It's giving rats and roaches. Exactly. So I'm saying. I feel to, like all marketing is the same. I feel like marketing. Well, is you know, well, well, well some of us works in corporate, you know, and that's not what it's giving. Your reputation your really matters. Like if you are like if somebody's out here saying that you're doing bad business and basically saying that you're committing fraud, nobody's gonna really go to you. But you gotta realize the people who watch these shows. When you say they do bad business, these bitches gonna do business with them just to see it. That every, all promotion is good promotion. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, the fuck is it not. is. It's not. It is. I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm not all. Not all promotion in the real world. My work is working. This platform has nothing to do with my real life. Well, if it has, if it has nothing to do with your real life, then like, what's the point of this show then? Oh. Mm. Okay. I'm done. Jeremy, I'm, you gonna be a little bitch tonight? I'm just. Tell we have questions. Tell me, we have questions. I'm just saying it like you saying like this ain't my real said, life. What is your purpose for this show? No shade, but I don't think Chase in Dallas is going to ruin Taylor's career as a realtor. That's what I don't think that. I don't was. think so either. I don't. Um, That's fine. But ghetto bitches watch this show, and I guarantee you, <laughs> all promotion is good promotion. I'm telling you, bad or good, it promotes your brand. Either I way. don't control what come out of their mouth. This show is called Chasing, so yes, it does. Then why do a show? But, but next, Jeremy. The, to Jeremy's defense, Jeremy saying, bitch, you need to learn to defend yourself a little better, bitch, because they just drag you to the mud and you ain't saying enough. And it would be different if they was calling you a hoe or saying that you saying that you're a bitch or something. But like to me, it's real nasty to attack somebody's like you know business acumen. Like I would, I would hate that. Like I would take that more personally if somebody than somebody like saying I was. A fucking whore or something. Depends you know, on like, who said it. It's a yeah. lot of bitches on this cast that bitch. It wouldn't. Yeah, Carl calls me a whore all the time. It's it's yes. Really, it's really. They know I'm a I mean, you so saying like, like tell you, okay. like tell you saying keep watching. This is the third episode. You ain't said nothing yet. It's coming. I'm I'm waiting for you to like bark back on these girls and is giving and is giving friendship circle of friendship. You were saying sadly up here. That's your girl. I mean, like, what I still stand by everything that I'm saying, but like the girls are like I'm saying, but like, it, I, I don't, I if it's like if he feels that is acceptable behavior, who am I to you know to be offended on his behalf? Well, we told you that last episode. No, y'all told me that it was a reason that he was getting dragged. That's what y'all told me. 
I felt like he was doing it on purpose. Is what I said. Well, I said that, not me. <laughs> but, but like, like I said, like, um, I just, I really feel that Marquise <sighs> is very messy, and I low key. We get to her in a minute. Just give me one second. And it, and it, got, and it, we and got and it, her major thing yet. And it I'm, gives, <laughs> and it gives very, 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 very like weirdo energy. And I was like, why, like, why were you blowing up seven, seven in Marquise's phone in the middle of the night? Like, what, like, to tell him about this? Like, what? Because it was like, I, I'm assuming that they, at the time they had some sort of a rapport. So it's like, because then there's people that have done this in Atlanta too, where it's like they just did a scene. So they'll call somebody who was involved with the scene to tell them what happened. And I feel like maybe because Marquise had like a relationship with, Keith seen seven at the time. He was making it seem like, oh, me and Jeff, Jeff just sat down and had this scene talking about y'all. And he said X, Y, Z, and Lil P. And that's not the way seven, it looked like. That's not the way Jeff seven had the main issue. I said, ain't the way seven. Said. Yeah, that's not that's not the way seven said that. Right, but I said this is probably what happened at the time. This is probably what Marquise was thinking. Like, oh, I have a rapport with them, so I'm you gonna call wasn't. them. He didn't barely. Say, say, he, he, didn't even, he didn't even know those girls like that. Exactly. And yeah, I they remember. The time, a lot of these bitches get on reality TV, they don't understand it. And I feel like Marquise just fell in that category. You don't yeah. understand? You thought you had some friends, and you don't. It was giving very. It was giving like very messy. I was like, wow, not you, mm -hmm. not you setting him. I was like, because you felt all of this. Like you felt all of that. Like you was dragging KDC and Seven, in my opinion, way more than Je Jeff was in that conversation. Je Jeff. To me, in my opinion, didn't really say much besides like he's man, he's like managing this, managing that. But like those are facts. But like as far as like the real underhanded back back to the comments, that was Marquise, and he was trying to get Jet Jeff to say it. Like you're gonna say something fucked up and ask me, do I agree? And if I say yes, then you gonna go tell somebody that's what I said when it was really you. Oh, okay. And that's why that was like I guess. I think for a while, I think and it wasn't confirmed to Seven until this episode, because he was trying to figure out how did this whole conversation start? Because I think for the, dura uh, for the duration of the season, it looks like Seven thought that it was Jet Jeff that was initiating all these conversations yeah. about him and Kesey's relationship when, I guess from this, this scene, it looked like Marquise was the one that sort of orchestrated it but then sort of puppeteered it into making it look like it was Jeff, Jeff that yeah. said these things. And like he and and he and the way that he was able to do that was because yeah, was because he already knew he already knew that that Seven and Kesey kind of felt some type of way about the questions. He already knew that, and he already is fucking like Astro from what we've been told already. So the minute that that Jet Jeff was actually trying to explain how the conversation happened. Like Astro kept on interrupting him, and I was like, "Can you please be quiet? Like, hush, you homeless child. Like, it's not, <laughs> not. And it, it was, it was given. I just, and I feel like I, I really do not like it when people, and I, I, I guess I can't use the word bully. I guess, but I feel like people are able to. Choose, I feel like people. Really? Are able to, I feel like people are able to choose the correct targets that they know can't really fight. Like, ain't nobody really scared of of Jet Jeff. Jet Jeff is harmless, in my opinion. He he a little messy, but he's isn't to me is not necessarily malicious. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. But like, but the way Astro was coming at him, like getting in his face, getting so irate while saying in the same breath, they don't have problems with one another, but y'all do. You do, you obviously have something against this man because like you have all of this energy for him. And I was, against who? Um, against Jet Jeff. And I was honestly really shocked to see Keith. that Astro? Yeah. It's clear what he got against him. He's still mad because Astro, I mean, he's still mad because Jet Jeff went in on him as Sean's thing about him not being no good musician. That's what he mad about. I mean, and he but, pretty much started that. And I yeah. like Astro, but he pretty much started that with Jet Jeff by trying to shade him about his lyrics in front of everybody at a party. Yes. And I, and like, like I said, I just want people to give the same energy all the way around to people. And I'm not saying Kesey is scared of anybody or anything of the sort, because I don't believe that to be the case. 
But it's weird to me how you was walking up on Jet Jeff like you wanted to beat his ass instead of walking up on the person that jumped you last season when you saw him the next time you saw him. Like you literally got jumped. You literally got jumped last season by DeAndre, and you were able to be very peaceful and coexist in following scenes. To me, the energy that he had for Jet Jeff this episode, he should have had for you know DeAndre last season. I didn't understand all of the like aggression. It didn't make sense, and I was happy that Seven could understand that all of that wasn't necessary. He was able to val- you know, you know, put his points out there in a valid way. And and speak and say what he felt. Who is that? Bus clown. Oh, <laughs> I was like, well, wait a minute, who the fuck is that? Um, let's see, where we at now? So I guess now we can just go ahead and go into um the axe throwing, which is where which is where you was at right now, um, with seven D checking the group. Then it was Kesey versus Jeff, Astro versus Jeff, Sean called out Kesey, I believe, and uh, there was Barbie versus Marquise. Anybody want to start? Um, I feel like seven was justified in his annoyance because why are there so many murmurs and different? questions being asked about a relationship that is amongst the two people that those those are the only two people that it matters with like if we good why is it why is it like a, a consistent topic of discussion like we're not in turmoil we're not in chaos we're not in none of that so it's like what are we what is, what is the question here like what are we talking about yeah. so i could definitely understand that and i now i did get a little lost i got a little confused when sean entered the picture and Astro was saying that Sean was defending Jet, and I couldn't follow what it was that Sean was, what the point that Sean was trying to make. And um, well, the point that he was trying, the point that Sean was trying to make, and honestly, I'll say this: I really did, I, I really did like Sean this episode. I felt like it was a, it was a right amount of messiness and slick commentary, and you showing us actual stuff instead of you know pulling up. Ted Lee's, you know, social security numbers and stuff. But what I'm saying is, um, Sean was basically saying, okay, we all had this conversation, but it was honestly because, like, we just didn't know what you guys were, like, were on. And then it almost kind of seemed that he was, you know, trying to speak up for himself because I think the energy that Seven was giving everybody, it's honest, it's, it's easy to see that Seven intimidates a lot of these people on this cast. Like, he's very intimidating, I can tell, probably. And he had Sean feeling like he was being targeted in the conversation that he was saying. So he decided to speak up because I'm, I'm assuming that Jet Jeff and him have had conversations about Kesey and um, Seven. Mm-hmm. But in the midst of Sean trying to explain why the topic of them were coming up, like Astro started to like yell over him and say, you need to stop speaking up for this bitch and let Jet Jeff talk. But Jet Jeff was trying to talk in the beginning anyway until Astro interrupted him. So it seemed to me that there was like a lot of people trying to cause confusion. So there was no, um, so there was no type of reconciliation. That's what it felt like. Yeah, it seemed like everybody was kind of saying a lot when it initiated with Seven trying to just kind of get the idea, like, why are we talking about me and Keith's relationship when we're good? And then they start talking over each other and then trying to explain why the topic was coming up. And I'm just like, girl, this is, this is a little bit crazy. Now, mm-hmm. Bobby Bankrose and Marquise. Wait, before, <laughs> before we move on from that, I need you to comment on how Marquise started all of this shit and he was just quietly sitting in the corner not talking about all the shit that he talked about, Seven and Marquis, oh, and Kesey. Like, he was quiet as a church mouth in that corner. Like, for you to, like, drop this bomb. And then it was another thing I didn't like that he did. Like, um, and this is why I say I already knew I was going to really like JC a lot. I can always tell, like, somebody I, I vibe with. JC is not worried about these bitches like that. He is out here trying to promote his business. He's out here, you know, trying to better his company and stuff like that. And Marquise 
is too worried about being messy on this show. Like in the midst of you being in an office or a studio that he owns, you're sitting here talking about how it needs work. Hold on, wait a minute, Jeremy. Give me one second. I have to cut you off. Um, and I normally don't be addressing comments like this, but I'm only addressing it only because you um uh, insinuated that um that you was like, is Jet Jeff paying the panel? Because we can't be watching the same show. First of all, what the hell is he paying us? Number two, your comment is yes, Astro and Marquise was wrong in some of the things, but Jet Jeff been stirring up mess and carrying things that have nothing to do with him. But I, if you've been watching, I uh, hopefully you've been watching the panel from the beginning of the season. We've all called Jet Jeff out for being messy all season. Like that's literally all we've been saying all season. Mm -hmm. But in this particular incident, in this particular episode, he wasn't fully wrong for some of the things that happened. Yeah, like I feel, I feel that I wonder. You know, I read, I read a uh, scholarly article one time about how media can easily influence somebody's thinking. Like some somebody can say some shit in front of you on the TV, and y'all would literally believe it, although you literally just saw before the shit was was being contradicted by the action of the person who just put out this lie. Like Jet Jeff is messy. Nobody's negating that. But Jet Jeff was not the person who was talking shit about Kesey in seven in that conversation. That was Marquise. And like just because Marquise says it in the confessional that that's what Jet Jeff is doing, that's that doesn't make it true. Because I saw what I saw. Mm -hmm. But because somebody says some shit, that's like that's what we're like. People are and people are believing that. And like I saw that in the Ariel and Marquise conversation, like Marquise and Ariel were having a conversation and Marquise was up there like now you sitting here like, you know, acting crazy and acting like you don't like you can't speak and having this energy. I just want an explanation. And bitches in the comments like, yeah, Ariel got a bad attitude. I don't like that bitch. Like, girl, what? Are we watching the same episode? I was confused by it too. I was like, Ariel why are you that like damn that? thing? Because you was in that man's inbox trying to get <laughs> on, and then all of a sudden, when the cameras pulled up, all of a sudden, it's like, you get out of my face. I don't want to talk to you. No, ma'am. Marquise was fully right in that situation. Girl, I love Barry Bank Rose, but yeah, you was fucked up in that situation. That was I was confused. Was I said, wait, have... what did he do? I don't so, know. Like... <laughs> so, wait. He was trying to, he was saying that because she was kind of like stand off. She didn't really want to talk to nobody when they yeah. were at the Halloween party. No, she was in her feelings because she was trying to talk to that man and he wasn't in her face. That's what the problem was. So well, then it's like, so what did he do? So wait, I like, I think, I think, it, I think two things could be true at the same time. I don't negate. I, agree. I don't think that, um, that, what's her name? Ariel was, was, you know, upset at him for a specific thing. She apparently had reached out to him or whatever the case may be. And they were supposed to meet on a Wednesday. It didn't happen. The next time he had hit her up, he said that I'll meet, hey, we can meet at this location. And he was talking about the chasing, you know, the chasing, you know, filming. She had, I guess she didn't know that he was gonna be on the cast. Mm. But because, but because like they had already had like a, a date that fell out, you know, it was giving, you know, he wasn't really interested. And I think that she was salty by that. But when she got to the party, it's not like she was giving him a nasty energy. It was kind of like, you know, nonchalant, hey, bye. You know, it's not because you okay. honestly not you're not honestly interested. Okay. And it's not like I'm out here trying to be friends with you or anything else like that. I was trying to get the dick and you don't you don't really want you know to, to really fuck like that. So what's the point of us even having a conversation? And on top of that, I don't know if you remember last episode during that party, Marquise was acting like he didn't even know Ariel. He was like, you know, I like okay. you know this is new information. Okay. Yeah. It, he said he said in the confessionals last episode, he was like, I think I seen her somewhere once. Uh, I don't really know her. I don't really know her okay. like that. Uh -huh. I mean, but he doesn't. She talked to this to him. They've never met before. I mean, but the way but but now you're saying in this scene that y'all have had this deep conversation and you're and you feel and you feel jaded by her not really acknowledging you. But in the same breath, you said that you didn't even really know her like that. So how have you had all of these deep conversations like okay. you said that you had? Now I have to change my statement. Well, did they say right they had right deep right conversations? Yeah, they're just learning via DM. You ain't no, okay, he said, he, like, 
I take said, back my original statement. Nah, Jeremy, that shit. Jeremy is right. I forgot about this. I'm he did, to say, he did say he did. So it was like she was like finish her finish her sentence. Finish your sentence because they were supposed to meet at Potter's house, but she's saying finish your sentence, but he didn't want to finish the rest of it. He said, Oh, I can't remember. And she was like, Oh, you can't remember, but you can remember everything before that. Finish your sentence. But then after okay. that, he started saying, I just yeah, I, I just want to he just said, I want an explanation because like you're coming across so like so weird, but we were having like this deep conversation. But if it's so deep and you and y'all had this conversation. You say you didn't know her last episode, and now you're saying you barely remember the conversation that y'all had. So how deep could it have been? All right, I take that back, Ariel. Oh. Okay, I'm team Ariel. Okay, so I need to understand the flow of events here. She hopped into his DMs. They wanted to date, right? They were supposed to meet up once. It didn't happen for whatever reason. Yeah. He said, "Let's meet at the chasing thing." And I think there was something about when they saw the message. She said, "Oh, you're gonna be on the cast. I'm gonna kind of fall back because I don't really do like yeah." The cast. So then when he meets her at the at the place, this is because mind you, what he said about me not really knowing her like that, that was a confession. That wasn't something that was said to her in that moment. So was she kind of like feeling some trouble some type of way in that moment because they didn't meet the first time? Or... I think I think she I think at that point that she realized it was giving a chop. He didn't really want to like talk to her on that level. He wasn't interested in like in her. He likes you don't want no damn huh? woman. What, what, did, what was it? Was it because he didn't come up to her at the Halloween party, or I think it, I think it was probably the DMs. It wasn't giving like flirting, and he had brought up meeting her at a location for filming, and she's like, "I'm not about to like. We're not. We're not about to do like. That's not about to. We're not doing she that." She find the bisexual butch queens. She fuck oh. with the niggas that like dick. That's the problem. <laughs> but like, but what I'm, but what I'm saying is like, I just, I, I think that, I think that what Ariel's point was was saying like, I was able to see while you were at the party that your energy was giving messy as fuck. Yeah, and I don't want to, I don't want to fuck with you like that, and I made the right decision. You know, the, uh, bisexual trade fishing going on the chasing brand. So she was just like, she was in her feelings because he wasn't as interested in her as she was in him. I'm not saying I'm not necessarily saying that. I feel like it's a little mixture of both. On top of her being able to peep that Marquise is messy, she also felt curbed. So I don't want to you. You don't want to fuck. So it's no reason for us to be friends because I don't even like that energy of friendship that you're really giving like that because you come across messy. And it's no reason. And it's no reason for you to really be like you know pressing me about me not being super excited to see you. When we get to the party, because we don't even know each other that well, right? Why are you like? Why are you pressing me, saying that you felt some type of way? You. But she didn't know that at the time, though. Huh? She didn't know that he said that. That was an confessional. What I'm what I'm saying though is, she's saying if you are acting like you don't know me, because when he got to when he was at the party, she didn't he didn't walk up to her and be like, "Hey, Ariel, like you know, I'm so glad I'm seeing you." It wasn't given that. It was like he like he didn't know her. So I'm gonna act like I don't really know you like that either. I feel like both of them were kind of like at the party, kind of standoff. Because even Jet was like, "Oh, Ariel's at the party, not trying to really talk to nobody." So I was like, "Is she giving the same energy to just him or everybody in the room?" Yeah, I can see that. So it's like I feel like there's pieces of this situation that are missing that we don't have because it seems like I mean that can't be all there is to it. Because I, really, I feel like if that was the case, I feel like she would have chose different words than what she was saying. Because she was making it seem like there was a lot more to what he was doing that we just didn't see. At least think, to me, I think that she feels that he's a clout chaser. I think that's I think that's what this all boils down to. And she didn't feel like she wanted to give it energy. Because she was like, "If your clout chaser off me, said you have to my DMs. I didn't happen to you." <laughs> that's, the that's one thing I look at. It's like it would be it would be different if he was reaching out to her and saying, "Hey, let's film. Hey, let's do this. Hey, let's do that." But she reached out to him, so it's like, but no. like so so wait, <laughs> like that doesn't that doesn't even make sense. That like that like just because you so me fucking you means I want like you have more clout than me. That other like, but how, you, but how would she say I'm, you're gonna get caught off me when I wasn't the one that reached out to you? The point is because you're trying to create this moment in front of this camera. You're trying to get clout off of me. The fact that before we ever filmed this show, I thought you were fine and want to fuck is like moot at this point. It, that has that has nothing to do with anything. 
That's like me and you. That's like me and you having a conversation and me being interested to well, you being interested to fuck, right? And we and then I and then I mosey around and play around and not really meet you. I set you up for it on a um when we were supposed to go on a date or, or, or two. And then you see me at a party that's being filmed. And, you know, the energy that you're going to give me is not, hey, how you doing? It's not going to give that. It's going to be like, oh, hey, you know, what's up? And you're going to move on. But then I go to a separate location that we're all at. And then I'm going to press you about it when it wasn't that deep between us. Anyway, obviously, you want to have a moment with me. But me, fu- you wanting to fuck or whatever the case may be is moot at this point. It's a lot. It's a lot of. It's a lot of famous. It's a lot of famous people that fuck people that are not famous and don't have shit going for themselves. It doesn't mean that those people have clout. It just means that you look nice in your photos, and I just wanted to fuck. But like you're using this to try to press this situation in front of the camera when it's not that deep. I don't know. I don't. I don't understand. I, I mean, maybe maybe we maybe we are. Are talking two different languages, but like to me, it was very, it was very cut and dry. Well, clearly, Nikki wants people to say something about the makeup that she had on her confessional. Any thoughts? <laughs> this I'm sleepy. I can't okay, so that's so no one has anything on? to say about that. So that was pretty much the end of the episode, right? <clears throat> Hell yeah! All right, so we made an hour. I thought it was gonna be shorter than that. We did not make no damn hour. We did make an hour. We went over that with twenty an hour and twenty one minutes. Hell, I thought it was gonna be forty five minutes. <laughs> Y'all kept skipping. Are you every time. Night ass tonight? What the fuck, JT girl? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I I started early. <laughs> y'all do know that at the end of every show, we have to go around the room and let everybody know what we got going on. So we're gonna start off with Jamar. What you got going on? <sighs> okay, so we're uploading more content onto the YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have the boss babe next week. Hopefully, we win. Yes, honey. Um, we're going down to Orlando this week to start filming more scenes. Wish us luck with that. Um, I think that's it for now. Yes. Okay, Jeremy. Um, I have my channel. I actively upload content on there. The content is real fire. You know, I'm very uncut (laughs) and unfiltered. Um, I do um, I do reviews on Real Housewives of Potomac. I do reviews on all pop topics that are in the media right now. So y'all should subscribe to the channel because it's lit over there. And I'm almost at 7,000 subscribers, period. Period. And if you have not subscribed to Jeremy Page, get him to that 7K. Yes. Um, Carl Tremell, what y'all got? Well... So, so. <laughs> Tremel, what you got, bitch? <laughs> I have my new single coming out. It's coming out next week. It's called uh, Everything Remix featuring Rico with the K. Please pre order that. I see 285 motherfuckers up in here. I see 200 at least pre orders. It's only 99 cents. Thank you so much. <laughs> Um, I have Cock Goblin nice. out now. Go munch you y'all. Go munch y'all some dick tonight. Uh, we gonna get that going. Um, me and Tramiel have the corporate mouth out. We are reviewing X Men '97. Go get that right yeah, now. Go check that out. Go it's check it out because we are so in love with that show. Um, Tramiel will be performing oh. as the Boss Babes. I will be hosting the social media um, um, show. On uh, the Boss Bay weekend, so that's what we got going on. Videos are coming, albums are coming, shit's coming. We suck a dick all summer. Period. T. Period. Um, whatever, whatever blows my way, because it ain't shit on YouTube, it ain't shit on TV until Eleven Marriage Huntsville. 
So um yeah, whatever whatever happens, just just make sure you subscribe to the channel. I guess you ain't been paying attention to what we were talking about all day uh, er, earlier today, but I'll bring it up. So when it come down to me and my channel, me and T and Josiah are bringing back roast and review at the first of May. Um, we'll be doing uh different topics. I guess T wasn't paying attention to the group chat, but yes, we'll be doing that. Um, and as you know, as T said, we really don't have nothing to, to talk about until that raggedy ass LAMH comeback, which I still haven't made up my mind on. But nine times out of ten, we're going to. I'm going, I'm, I think I'm going to review it too. Oh, God, if you're doing it, I know I got to do it too, then. Oh, my goodness. LAMH. Yes. Oh, God. Child. I'm about to have bitches mad. You are. Ooh. You already know it. Um, T, aren't you doing Summer House? Oh, yeah, right. Summer House. <laughs> I've been wanting to do Love and Lock Up. I mean, um, after like after Lock Up. Mm -hmm. I know, uh, that's T shit. T no, the hell it ain't. You was, you was reviewing it at one point? I did that when it was COVID and it really wasn't that much going on. So I went on ahead and did it. Oh, God. now at the end of the listen, if your nerves can take it, fine. Because a lot of them people dumb. Like, you no, know, really, like, it's just what's going to annoy you is the stupidity. That's what's going to annoy you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, well, so if you could deal with that, they're fine. But if not. <laughs> And another thing, too, is just like Jamar said, me and Jamar are both, we are nominated for Podcast of the Year for the Prelude at the Balls of Baby Wars, and I'm nominated for YouTuber of the Year alongside Bundy Blue and House of Aaron, which I feel like Bundy is going to win. She definitely, she definitely, I didn't want to say, I didn't want to say, I'd like, she's definitely going to win. But she's definitely going to win that. Um, and I'm, and I'm all here for it. Um. I feel like this. The three of us are um, nominated for multiple things, and I just um, feel like this. Um, long as one of us wins something, or all of us win something, it is we all win, in my opinion. So I don't even, you know, that's just my opinion. But however, um, that's about it also um carl forgot to mention this but he's also on this song yeah available nasty now. remix <laughs> so with that being said we will see you guys uh wait a minute jamar should we tell them about what we talked about yesterday oh you want to wait for that you can if you want it's fine with me Okay, so Jamar and I are doing a special episode of the prelude where we bring our moms up for Mother's Day. So, yeah, that was Jamar's idea. Yes. It's going to be very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm, I'm very excited for the people, for, for this community to uh, meet my mother. A few, a couple of people, I know Scotty and Carl have met my mom. My mom is a key. She is. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> My mom is a key. That is where I get all of this from to me. She so, is. Yeah, she she is a key. She's probably gonna read me on there. Not what to. day is it dropping? Um we we don't have a date. We don't have a date yet. We just talked about it. We just came it. up with the idea last night. Yeah. And we asked our mom if they'd be interested and uh both of them were very, very excited. Well, my mom was kind of like nervous. She said, Wait, this is gonna be how many people watch your live? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So I gotta do my face. I gotta put my good wig on. Mama oh, my mama definitely said she was gonna make sure her face was beat. So, uh, so I might as well be beat too. Carry it. Put that to the group chat so I can make sure I'm there. I definitely will. But with that being said, we will see you guys on next Thursday. Like we said, me and Jamar nominated for Boss Babe. Tramel is performing at Boss Babe. And Carl will be a social media host for Boss Babe. So all four of us will be at Boss Babe next week. Girl, I'm going to be going to flats because I ain't going to stand up. <laughs> but anyway, y'all, we are out of here until the next slide. We will talk to you guys a little bit later. Bye, y'all.